I know I've made this statement before, and some people kind of smile when I say it, but I feel right at home this morning. Amen. Feeling at home in the presence of Jesus. Thank God, thank God. Now, as I've already indicated, Brother Thompson gave a good introduction to my message this morning. And in fact, you will find the message title in the bulletin this weekend. If you haven't already looked at the bulletin, don't look at it now. But if you have already looked at it, you will notice that the, the first article has a great deal to say about our wonderful Lord Jesus and, and all that the Apostle John had to say about Jesus. And each one of the chapters of the book of John has something specific to say about our wonderful Lord. And, and verse no, or chapter number 15 in particular of John, it says something about Jesus that I want to talk to you about this morning. And you already know what John 15 is referring to, the true vine, we be in the branches. Thank God I'm glad because this true vine has not changed, Brother Frankie. It's still the same today. Glory to God in that life that flows forth through that vine as it was 40 years ago, so it is today. The Lord hasn't changed. I want to read about four verses of Scripture, verses number 4, 5, and then 11 and 16. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye, except ye abide in me. I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Verse 11, These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. Verse 16, Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I do thank you again for the reading of the Word of God. Bless it to our hearts. Add your blessings to the message in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. This chapter tells us a great deal about Jesus and who he is and what he has done for us. And it tells us about the fullness of life. It tells us about the fruitfulness of life, and I believe it also tells us about our future life. Now, these are wonderful subjects that we could explore in detail, although these are not necessarily the ones I'm going to be looking at directly today. But, you know, as we look at the fullness of life and the fruitfulness of life and our future life, these things are wonderful things to consider. However, we need to know how are we going to be able to attain them. How are we going to have this full life and a fruitful life and a future life with the Lord? I'm glad that this portion of Scripture also tells us that the power that is needed for us to reach these goals is available to every one of us. For these things cannot be reached from a human standpoint. Just doing good deeds and good works and turning over a new leaf and making a New Year's resolution is not going to do it. But thank God a personal encounter and a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ will, number one, enable us to have a full life will enable us to have a fruitful life and will able, enable us to have a future life that is filled with joy and the blessings and the presence of God. And, oh, I'm so glad that there is a power available to us today that we can enjoy living. Amen. This certainly takes it out of the natural realm and puts it in a spiritual. But that's where we should be in a spiritual realm. For the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit, their foolishness unto him. But the spiritual man, he understands the things of the Spirit. And God reveals things unto his people by the Spirit. Praise the name of the Lord for your attention this morning. And in verse number 4, 
This verse of Scripture simply points out the fact that we do have this life-giving power available to us today. Thank God he points out the fact that we must abide in him. At this particular point, the only requirement for us to have fullness of life in our present existence is to abide in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I know there's a lot of other things could be said relative to this point of abiding in him but let me just focus in upon this one thing today and say again that the only requirement of me and you today for us to have this life is to abide in Christ and may I say that closeness to Christ is not sufficient is not adequate now I want you to hear me through we need to live close to the Lord. But you know, dear friends, if you walked out here to one of these trees and you took your sharp pocket knife and you severed one of those little branches and then you held that branch back to the trunk of the tree, that branch would die. It was mighty close, but it was not abiding. I'm afraid that in our present society, there is too many folk who feel like that simply because they go to church, they're a part of a Christian family per se. They have Christian friends, and they're living close enough to the Lord. And it certainly is wonderful that a person has those characters about them. But the fact remains, just being in church is not going to take us to heaven. We've got to be in Christ. Being associated with God's people can certainly increase our faith and can give us spiritual stamina and strength to fight the good fight of faith. But just being with Christian people does not make us a Christian. I've heard Billy Graham say many times on his radio broadcast concerning what is required of being a Christian. He said, just because you walk through a garage doesn't make you an automobile. And just because you walk through a church doesn't make you a Christian. You've got to abide in him. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And every branch that abides in him, they have this life-giving power. This life-giving flow does not come from the natural. It doesn't come from church organizations. It does not come from denominations. It comes with a personal relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, of which he said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. May I say that branches are totally dependent upon their abiding in the vine. There is absolutely no way that I can continue in a spiritual lifestyle if I'm not connected with the Lord Jesus. There is no way that I can have a hope beyond this veil of tears unless that living hope is resident in my heart. As I said, the branches are totally, absolutely dependent upon the life that flows through the main vine. Amen. This is a wonderful thing and a wonderful thought within itself because, number one, when we recognize that we are totally dependent upon God for our life, that removes any and all boasting. You know, it makes me sick sometimes when it appears that people are wanting to say, who I am who they are, what they have done. The fact of the matter is, as far as eternal values are concerned, none of us can do one thing without the divine help of Almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. My, the spiritual life that I have today, the spiritual life that you have today is not because you were brought up in this certain church of the past years, not because you had a certain pastor of the bygone years, not because you were born into a certain family, but my friend, because you are a member of the family of God, and it's the spiritual life that is flowing through the vine into your branch that is bringing forth the fruit. Praise the name of the Lord. We're totally dependent 
upon our abiding in Christ. And I don't have to go in detail as to what it means to abide. You know, just stay there. <laughs> just abide there. Don't move. Throw away your forwarding address card. You won't need any. You're going to stay there. Amen. Continue in that which you have. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> Something else about our abiding in this true vine. I believe that it gives us that wonderful assurance that this life-giving flow is going to be felt in these branches in every season of the year. Amen. In the book of Psalms, chapter 1 and verse 3, the portion of Scripture there says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, his leaf shall not wither. He shall be like a tree that's planted by the waters. His leaf shall not wither. Have you seen anyone this week with wilted leaves? You say, that's what I saw when I looked in the mirror. <laughs> Amen. All right, let's talk about our abiding in Christ. Thank God, regardless of circumstances, regardless of outward conditions, that life is still flowing that gives life to the branches. The leaf shall not wither. In sickness or in health, in peace or in war, in a time of frustrations, times of disappointments, times of heartache, times of prosperity, times of wondering if anything is going to come together right, and times of feeling like you have everything under control, there's still life flowing because the vine is not dependent upon circumstances for the life to flow through. Amen. Glory to God. It is our responsibility to make sure that we are connected, abiding in the vine. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, hallelujah. As I said, regardless of the seasons of the year, the life continues to flow. A rather humorous illustration, but back a few years ago when I was quite active in the Royal Ranger program, in our campouts, we would have, uh, in our district sectional campouts, we would have several hundred boys and always have a program and have some skits. And, and some of you men will remember this skit, I'm sure. But it, uh, one of the groups would call four different men up there, and they would represent the four seasons of the year. And these four men would hold their arms up and they would twist around and turn, you know, as the seasons would change, the leaves would come on green and the life would appear. Then the cold wind would blow and they'd begin to droop, you know. You know how things like that would be. And then they would select one of the commanders or one of the leaders to come, and he was just to run in and out among all the trees. And, and as the MC was talking about the changes of the season, and he would finally get to the end of it, and he says, and the sap continues to run. <laughs> well, I'm not casting any reflection upon this life that is flowing into us in every season of the year. But friend, whether the north winds are blowing or the heat wave is on, the life continues to flow out into the branches and gives life unto them. Oh, how we need that life today, friend. There is no death in the presence of God. There is no death in the family of God. You say, Brother Martin, that's a paradox because we are dying. The natural is dying, but the spiritual is being renewed day by day. Glory to God. At about 2.30 the other morning when they got a call from the Clem family, the first words they said were, Dad is now in heaven. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God you say, how can you be rejoicing about such a time as that? I'm not rejoicing because of the death of a loved one. I'm rejoicing because the landing has been achieved. Amen. I'm rejoicing because they're safe on the other side. 
praise the Lord. Oh, thank God. And regardless, friend, if we will abide in Christ, we're going to have that life. None of you likes to shake hands with anybody that gives you that old dead fish handshake. You know what I'm talking about. I mean, you just go away shaking your hand and trying to rub the scales off. But you remember that handshake that Sister Stevens gives you. <laughs> Amen. I mean, there's life behind that handshake. And the only reason you go, pardon me, Sister Stevens, I've had them do it to me too. The only reason you remember that handshake is you go away rubbing it, trying to get the bones back in place. <laughs> no reflection, Sister Stevens. They used to do me that way too. I remember when I was an usher in the church, and more than once, I've noticed people after I'd shake their hand, they'd walk down the aisle rubbing their hand, and I couldn't figure it out. And come to find out, I almost broke it. I didn't know that. <laughs> but there's life when you're connected to the vine. Life. And friend, if there was ever a day in which we needed life, it's today because death is surrounding us. Amen. One other thing I want to know, two other things. Now I've got to hurry, don't I? In verse number five, verse number four tells us about this life giving power. But verse number 5 tells us about this life-enabling power. Praise God. Oh, I like this. You know, friends, this flow of life into our branches is a productive power. It does something. It is not just to make us feel good. It is not just to put a twinkle in our eye. It is not just to put a spring in our step, but... And yes, it'll make us dance in the spirit and it'll make us speak in tongues and do a whole lot of things. But I'm glad that the bottom line to the enabling power that is resident in the life of a child of God who is connected to the true vine is because there is going to be that appearance of the fruit of the spirit. There's going to be some spiritual fruit appear on that tree. And it is our abiding in Christ that enables us to bear spiritual fruit. There is absolutely no way that we can bear spiritual fruit unless we're connected to the vine. Oh, God, help us today to get out of the realm of the flesh and trying to do the work of the Spirit and stay in the realm of the spirit that the works of the spirit might be accomplished in our midst amen we can't do it without the lord we cannot be a christian without god's help we cannot give a credible witness for jesus christ without being connected to the vine we cannot do the works of god without that life-giving flow of god coming into our lives oh hallelujah Thank God again in Psalms, the first chapter, and in part of verse number three, says it bringeth forth his fruit in his season. Thank God. I said it brings forth fruit in its season. There is no begging. There is no working. There is no worrying. There is no anything that we can do to bring forth fruit other than abide in Christ. Amen. Glory to God. You plant a peach tree and all things being equal at the right time, that peach tree is going to bear some fruit and it's going to be peaches. Amen. Glory to God. Thank God if we'll abide in Christ, we can bear fruit in this day when the world says the church is going down the drain, when the world says the church is not relevant to our society, when the world says we don't need the church today, we do need the church, and the church can still bear fruit. 
because he enables us to do so. Glory to God. Verse number one lets us know that the husbandman is going to do some work on this tree. And the reason he's going to prune this tree is so it might bear more fruit. Go on down a few verses further, and it speaks of it bearing much fruit. You know, there are some of us requires more pruning than others. I can see a lot of you folk out there this morning, and I can almost see a halo over your head and angel wings on your shoulders. I mean, you're just so right, it seems like nothing ever goes wrong. <laughs> And then I look at myself and I wonder if I can ever do anything right. It takes a heap of pruning, it seems like, to see, bring things and to keep things in focus. We sometimes begin to chafe under the hand of the Lord when he puts the pruning shares to our branches to trim off the unnecessary things. You know, I could almost start rambling here because I feel like the further we go with the Lord, the more he's going to apply the sharing and the pruning to get rid of what's unnecessary. And I find that in our present day, there are many folk who laid some things down who they've gone back to pick up. Amen. Just because it's almost 12, you don't have to get that quiet. Glory to God. He will prune us that we might bring forth more fruit. And that is the key right there. Not only more fruit, but much fruit. And you know, it is not necessarily the quantity of fruit as it is the quality of the fruit. Amen. We sometimes have a tendency to say, I'm not going to prune the tree because I want a bushel of peaches. Whereas if we would prune the tree, the peaches we do get would be far more luscious than what we would have otherwise. The pruning process is so very necessary, and God help us to submit ourselves willingly, lovingly, devotedly to the pruning process because we know it will bring forth much fruit. Glory to God. Who is there among us that would not want to bear fruit for the Lord Jesus? Sure we would. Then if we do, we must abide in him and allow the husbandman to prune us. Glory to God. Yes, we have this life-enabling power. And to bring this down to our present day, I believe that we today have a life-enabling power that is told to us in Acts 1 and 8. Ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. I cannot overemphasize the importance and the necessity of our being filled with the Spirit in 1994. I cannot overemphasize the importance of our allowing the Holy Ghost, number one, to reveal unto us who Jesus Christ is. He is the true vine. He does have the life, everlasting life. And if we will remain with him, we can enjoy that life. We need the Holy Ghost. Amen. And my time is rapidly getting away, so I'll hasten. One other thing I want to mention. Verse number 11. I believe that this portion of Scripture lets us know that there is available to us this life-enriching power. Praise God. We not only have a life-giving power and a life-enabling power, but we have a life-enrichment. You know, we're living in a day when a people are always attracted to things which will enrich their lifestyle whether it be dollars and cents or social standing, prestige, popularity, whatever it is. 
anything to elevate them and to pick them up and to give them a sense of value, of personal self-worth. You know, it's a sad day in anyone's life when they lose sight of their self-worth. And I don't want to get that out of proportion, but I simply say that I've got to recognize that I may not be anything to this world, but I'm something to God. Amen. I belong to the Lord. There's a value there. Glory to God. You know, many today are living in a state of emptiness, voidness, unfulfilled life, unsatisfying lifestyle. They're just simply existing Monday through Sunday. It's life is a drudgery to them. They curse the day they were born. They curse the day ahead. They wish that things were totally different. Just a few weeks ago, a friend of ours went back to see her physician following surgery some weeks ago, and the doctor said thus and so, and she said, I wish I'd have never come to you in the first time. He said, you'd have been dead if you hadn't. She said, good, that's what I wanted to do anyway. That's a rather sad outlook on life, isn't it? There's no life, there's no happiness, there's no joy, there's no fulfilling of a lifestyle. When you say, I wish I was gone, but I want to tell you, friends, that if you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ, if you'll stay connected to the vine, if you'll let that power flow through your life that will bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, such as love, joy, peace, understanding, and all these things, Things, hallelujah, you will feel like that you have something worth living for. Amen. It will enrich your life. It will give you standing. It will give you status in this life, not from a natural standpoint, but from a spiritual standpoint. Thank God you can be convinced of the fact I'm a child of God and I've got something to live for. Amen. Isn't it sad that the multitudes there are in the world today who feel like there's nothing worth living for? They look to the future. Every time I attend graduation exercises and from high school, college, wherever it might be, there's a host of people there that seemingly they have no direction. Brother Raymond Sandrell and a good friend of ours, as you know, is teaching in the junior college down in Tyler. He asked his students at the first of the last school year, he says, what do you have in mind for the future? What are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? And he said, out of that large class, there was a mere handful that could indicate something they had in mind as to what they wanted to do. That's sad, isn't it? That's sad. But I wouldn't be surprised if, if I could come down and ask every individual in this congregation this morning, the younger generation, what is it that you want to do? Would they really know? And I'm not saying that we do have all the answers. But I believe that, number one, we need to have that goal in mind. I'm going to make myself available to God. And whichever way God leads me, that's the way I'm going. Amen. Amen. He gives us something worth living for. I believe that there's a number of things that the Lord wants us to have in life. And he points this out so graphically here in verse 11. He says that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. A person who truly has the joy of the Lord, and I mean the genuine, true joy of the Lord, that person is indeed a blessed person. Amen. They are blessed. This joy of the Lord does not necessarily mean there is an absence of trouble. Because you see, this life that produces this joy is not dependent upon outward circumstances. We can be in the midst of trouble and confusion, sickness and heartache, and still have the joy of the Lord. 
Glory to God. We've seen this exemplified so many times in the life of so many of God's dear people who were suffering physically, afflicted, terminal cases, and you went by to cheer them up, but you left the one that was cheered up because of their attitude. Life was worth living. Amen. Jesus is real. Oh, hallelujah. I believe that this life that we do have through our Lord Jesus Christ is revealed unto us by the Holy Spirit. And if we will lock into what God has made available to us, our lifestyle today can take on an altogether different meaning. Spiritually speaking, I don't think the Lord wants us to go through this life with their head hanging down. Amen. Glory to God. Life. A rich life. Enjoyment of life. Glory to God. I'll never forget the first time it was I understood more what the scripture means that in the Old Testament it speaks of certain prophets and men they died being full of days. The first time I heard that really explained in a way that really made sense to me, of course I knew what I thought the scripture said. Brother E.R. Anderson was preaching Brother A.R. Trotter's funeral service over in Dallas. And he used that scripture. He said, actually, what that means is their days were full. They not only died being full of days, but their days were full. Oh, what a difference that makes. And I believe that to all of us who knew Brother Trotter, his days were full. There were not void spaces. There were not emptiness there. It was full. He enjoyed living. I said he enjoyed living. Are you enjoying living today? You'd better be. And the only way we can is to abide in him. Let that life flow through us. Oh, glory to God. Oh, there's so much more I'd like to say about all this this morning. But friends, if we are truly abiding in Christ, even as Christ did abide in the Father, you see all the works that Jesus did when he was here on earth. And he only did that because of his relationship with the Father. Amen. And then Jesus said that he was going away and said if he went away, then greater works than he did would we do. How? By our abiding in him. I believe that we as the church, the family of God today, we have a right to expect miraculous, wonderful things accomplished for the glory of God because the life that Jesus has is more powerful than the sickness and the pain and the trouble and the heartache that the devil throws in our pathway. Amen. Oh, I want to abide, don't you? Glory to God. We do abide there by faith. It is the pruning that the Lord does now to help us to bring forth more fruit and much fruit and quality fruit. And my encouragement to every one of us this morning is let's don't become impatient. Let's don't become irritable when the Lord starts pruning us. Because as Sister Winstead has said so many times, he's doing it for our good. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, Lord Jesus, we are so very grateful. Thankful to you today for the presence of God. Lord, we thank you for the word of God, which is indeed a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Lord, we thank you today because we have this life-giving power, life-enabling power, and this life-enriching power today. Thank God, and all that's required of us is to abide in you. 
Lord Jesus, I pray that you would help everyone under the sound of my voice to be more determined than ever before to live for Jesus Christ with all of their heart, soul, mind, and strength. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Praise the Lord. I want us to sing one chorus, if you will, Sister Greg, please. I want more of Jesus, more and more and more. I want more of Jesus, more and more and more. I want more of Jesus, more and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I've ever had before. I want more of his great love, so rich, so full and free. I want more of Jesus, so I'll give him more of me. I want more of Jesus, more and more and more. I want more of Jesus than I've ever 